Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we will continue with module 4 which is basically texture representation. So, in this lecture which is lecture number 19, we will try to gain understanding related to texture fiber in Euler space and periodicity associated with the Euler space. And a little bit about incomplete pole figures. So, the concepts that are covered are fiber texture, periodicity in Euler space and incomplete pole figures. Let us start. So, you see regarding fiber texture and regarding fiber texture in both which can be observed in both the pole figures and in the orientation distribution function right ODFs. You see when we do when we did a detailed analysis of the orientation distribution function that is the ODF, it revealed that the description with ideal components means ideal texture components or ideal orientations are inadequate. So, rather the texture is most actually be demonstrated or described as a spread of one orientation to another orientation. For example, we usually use the example of rolled samples and in this case I will take the example of face centered cubic material being rolled and being recrystallized. So, maybe warm rolling has been carried out. So, usually face centered cubic material we consider say medium to high stacking fault energy material which could produce general components like copper components, S components and the brass components. So, if we look into such pole figure and basically we look into the 111 pole figure. And this 111 pole figure we have seen earlier shows the positions of the copper, S and brass components which are coming a multiple times and this is coming multiple times because of the symmetry of the cubic crystal of course and we will learn about this in the next lecture. But here you see that when there is a copper texture and the S texture and the brass texture they are not coming in terms of individual components, but they are coming in form of a fiber and that means in a kind of tube which are connecting copper, S and brass may be with higher and lower intensities in certain positions. Right? So, if we describe this texture in terms of the orientation distribution functions that is phi 2 equal to uh, 0 to 90 degree ODF with a graduation of 5 degrees you see you can see the formation of brass component here, the gauss component here and then you can see that th there is a fiber connecting the gauss and the brass. right? And on the other hand if we look, if we, if we visualize it what we will find out that from 0 degree to 5 degree and if we are looking inside this, uh, inside this dimension where uh, uh, inside means perpendicular to phi uh, sorry parallel to phi 2 that is 0, 5 degree, 10 degree, 15 degrees up to 90 degrees of phi 2. You can see that this fiber or this component is flowing along phi 2 up to 5 degree and then 10 degree and then 15 degree and then 20, 25, 30, 35 and it is moving right. 
and when it moves down and you can see it goes up to the s component which is forming at around you know 63 degrees and can be observed from 60 to 65 degrees. So, you see even at 70 degrees you can observe. So, such a spread and the form of you know tube or fiber can be observed in a orientation distribution function or Euler space much more clearly than that is observed in the pole figure. So, as you know that ODFs or Euler space gives more complete description of the texture and it is more easier in here to identify when multiple texture components are forming and they are forming fibers. right? So, let us go ahead and you can see this is a typical fiber texture that can be observed in you know the Euler space with phi 1, phi, phi 2 which we have plotted all these three axes up to 90 degrees. And we will discuss in detail that why we are not plotting phi 1, phi, phi 2 from 0 to 360 degrees each, but we are plotting it up to 90 degrees because just to let you know that because of the cubic crystal that we are plotting here, the symmetry of the cubic crystal like the 1 0 0 axis has a, a four fold symmetry right at every rotations of 90 degree you will get the same crystal and you would not you will not recognize that there is a 90 degree rotation right if you do not know it right and because the because of the crystal uh, position of the uh, motif or the atoms arrangement and its configuration remains the same even after 90 degree 180 degree 270 degree rotation and at 360 degree rotation it comes at the original position, but all of these will look like original. So, you see that this reduces the phi 1 phi phi 2 section to 90 degrees and there are also other uh, regions of reducing it to 90 degrees and we will look one by one in subsequent lectures. Now, you see that we have plotted phi 1 phi phi 2 from say phi 1 from 0 to 90, phi from 0 to 90 and phi 2 from 0 to 90 here right and you see that we are showing the typical copper type rolling texture hmm, and which is best described in terms of continuous orientation uh, tubes which is running through the orientation space and not as kind of component. So, typical fibers that are observed in this FCC polycrystals are alpha fiber. Now, this alpha fiber is basically called the 110 parallel to ND. So, it is either called a 110 fiber or an ND fiber right and this ND fiber if we talk in terms of Euler angles it you know starts from 0 to 0 degrees for phi 1, 45 degrees at phi and phi 2 equal to 0 or 90 degrees right. So, if you look here if you look here we are showing the partial alpha fiber which are formed in this kind of warm rolled texture for medium to high stacking fault FCC material which is may be basically aluminum or copper right. Now, you see that the alpha fiber is starting from gauss and it is going up to brass and this is the partial alpha fiber that we are showing. So, you see that if we look closely the gauss texture basically forms at phi 1 equal to 0 right phi equal to you know uh, 45 degrees and then phi 2 equal to 90 degrees right. It also forms at you know you see we have given this and it is 0 degree 45 degree and 90 degrees and it also forms at 0 degree 45 degree and 0 degree. So, an alpha fiber may form here also. So, the you see the alpha fiber is the fiber which is parallel to you see it is parallel to phi 1, phi 1 is the rotation about n d and so you see the fiber which is parallel to phi 1 is the fiber which is parallel to n d and is known as the n d fiber right. And you see that in this case the n d axis 
that is the 110 is constant in this case. So, this fiber is the 110 fiber, right. So, in this case you see the R D will keep on changing, but the N D from here to here is constant. The same is in this case, the same alpha fiber is repeated here and here and you can see that the alpha fiber from here to here has N D equal to 110 or parallel to 110. Now, you see that this is the N D fiber because the rotation is along phi 1 and this fiber is parallel to phi 1. On the other hand you see if we talk about another important fiber that is forming and this fiber and this fiber is neither parallel to you know N D nor R D or T D. N D is the normal direction, R D is the rolling direction and T D is the transverse direction that I have repeatedly explained. Now, you see that when we are considering this fiber, it is starting from brass which is basically you see it starts uh, at phi 1 equal to 35 degrees, phi equal to 45 degrees right and phi 2 equal to 90 degrees it reaches here. If you look here brass which is 0 1 1 2 1 1 type of component it starts at 35 degree 45 degree and 90 degrees. So, you see that the brass component is present at phi 2 equal to 0 that is here and at phi 2 equal to 95 degrees that is here relating gauss to brass gross to brass to form partial alpha fiber and if this fiber continues up to here that is up to phi 1 equal to 90, phi equal to 45 and phi 2 equal to 90, this is the full alpha fiber right. Now, you see the beta fiber I am coming again that beta fiber starts from brass which is 35 degrees at phi 1 right, 45 degrees at phi and 90 degrees at phi 2 and it goes to S which is basically you see 59 degrees at phi 1, 29 degrees at phi, 29 degrees and then 60 de 63 degrees at phi 2. So, and it goes to copper which is again you see phi 1 is equal to 90 degrees, phi equal to 35 degrees and phi 2 equal to 45 degrees. So, this kind of component which runs from 35 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree to 90 degree, 35 degree, 45 degrees in the Euler space is beta component right in case of FCC crystals. Now, you see what we are discussing here, we are discussing the fiber texture which are basically you see parallel to either N D, R D or T D right. So, we have given example of fiber texture parallel to N D. There could be other fiber texture say for example, gamma texture uh, gamma fiber sorry gamma fiber which is considered to be 1 1 1 parallel to N D texture. And you see that if we if we if we look here this is kind of if the gamma fiber texture is present in the material it will look something like this. Here the gamma fiber is again partial type fiber texture and it starts from you see 60 degree 54.7 degree and 45 degree that means it starts from phi 1 equal to 60 degrees phi equal to 54.7 degrees some something like that and then phi 2 equal to 45 degrees and then you see it goes up to phi 1 equal to 90 degrees keeping phi and phi 2 same. So, it is a fiber which is again parallel to N D because it is parallel to the 1 1 1 axis which is parallel to N D and this is also the N D fiber and this is known as the gamma fiber for FCC material. Now, let us take another example which is an important example the tau fiber and the tau fiber is a fiber which is the 110 fiber and is parallel to T D and this means that when this fiber runs that means this fiber ok this fiber when this fiber runs it runs along phi it runs along phi and it is parallel to T D that means the 110 axis always remains constant and remains parallel to T D. So, you see it starts from it starts from phi 1 equal to 90 degree phi equal to 0 right and phi 2 equal to 45 and it goes from phi 1 equal to 90 degrees 
means it goes to you know phi 1 equal to 90 degree phi equal to 90 degree and phi 2 equal to 45 in this. So, it starts from here and goes here and is parallel to phi and it is a T d fiber and why it is a T d fiber. If you remember the Euler space what we have shown is that the first rotation is along n d that is phi 1 is rotating along a phi 1 rotation is given along n d right and then the second rotation is given along r d right. So, if we rotate phi 1 along n d by 90 degrees then the second rotation which is given along the r d is now basically r d dash which is rotated by 90 degrees which is basically t d right. So, basically the second rotation is actually given along t d which makes the fiber formed parallel to phi the fiber which is forming parallel to phi, but at phi 1 equal to 90 degree parallel to T d. So, this is a T d fiber right. On the other hand if you see if a fiber which is forming parallel to phi, but it is forming somewhere where the phi 1 is basically 0 ok whatever phi and phi 2 could be, but the phi 1 is basically 0 and it is basically you know you have you can see that the phi is changing and the phi 2 remains constant right anywhere it could be here or here or here. Now, because the phi 1 is 0 the rotation of phi is along R d this kind of fibers which forms at phi 1 equal to 0 are basically called the R d fiber. So, this kind of fibers are parallel to R d and are known as R d fiber right. So, let us take this and give example for the body center cubic fiber textures right in case of Euler space and let us go ahead with the N d R d and the T d fiber right for B C C. Now, you see in this case what we have done we have again drawn the Euler space, but for our you know uh, uh, easy. So, to make things easier for us what we have done is that we have drawn the phi 1 vertically down phi 2 horizontally like this and phi coming out of the paper right. Now, you see that if this is the you know Euler space related to the B C C texture and we are going to show you some fiber and show you the nomenclature of the fibers in case of B C C. So, let us see you see that what we have studied is that if the phi 1 rotation is 0 then the fibers which are along phi axis are basically called the R d fiber and you see that. So, from 0 to 90 degree this fiber or from here to here this fiber is called the you know R d fiber because you see it has phi 1 equal to 0. Now, you see that this fiber this fiber is an important fiber in case of B C C and is called the alpha fiber alpha B C C fiber. So, we can put the subscript B C C in order in order to distinguish it from the uh, you know F C C fiber textures. So, you see it runs from 0 0 1 1 1 bar 0 which is this component 0 0 1 1 1 bar 0 to you see 1 1 1 1 1 bar 0 right and in between it has 1 1 2 1 1 bar 0 and you can add this two you know n d excesses or the rolling planes a, a crystallographic plane that is 0 0 1 and 1 1 1. So, that you can get 1 1 2 and you can see that in between somewhere maybe in the middle it has the 1 1 2 1 1 bar 0 texture components. So, here is this alpha fiber and if you continue this fiber up to the end it forms 1 1 0 1 1 bar 0 and thus this is the alpha B, B C C fiber. On the other hand we can look into the N D fibers and of course, we 
know now that the fibers which are parallel to phi 1 are known as the N D fiber and in this case the fiber is known as the gamma fiber and it runs from you see 1 1 1 1 1 bar 0 right this component to 1 1 1 1 2 bar 1 to 1 1 1 0 1 bar 1 1 1 1 1 1 bar 2. So, you see that the N D is parallel to 1 1 1 and thus it is an N D fiber right. When we go ahead and we see that there are other fibers like the epsilon fiber and this fiber is forming at phi 1 equal to 90 degrees right. And what happens when there is a rotation of 90 degrees along phi 1 which occurs about the N D axis. The second rotation phi basically takes place along T D right, because after 90 degree the R D forms R D dash which is basically parallel to the actual T D and therefore, it forms the T D fiber which is the epsilon fiber which runs from 0 0 1 1 bar 1 bar 0 to 1 1 1 1 1 bar 2 right and then it goes to 1 1 0 0 0 1 right. So, this is the epsilon fiber. Now, there could be other fibers right. In case of BCC there is a neta fiber and there is a you know tau uh, or eta fiber whatever you say here and you see that all both this fiber the neta fiber is a fiber which is parallel to R D it is a partial fiber and therefore, it is an R D fiber it runs from you see 0 0 1 1 0 0 to 0 1 1 1 0 0 whereas, the another fiber which is parallel to phi 1 is basically the N D fiber again and this fiber runs from you see 0 1 1 1 0 0 to 0 1 1 1 uh, sorry 0 1 bar 1. Now, you know how to calculate back calculate the Miller indices that forms in the Euler space and you can calculate that and relate it to this uh, texture fibers and you can find out that whether we have explained it appropriately or not. And you can see that in case of even for the tau fiber where we are saying it is an N D fiber the N D is basically parallel to 1 1 0. So, whenever these fibers are there we must understand that when it is an R D when it is an N D and when it is a T D fiber right. So, you see that that is all about fibers and now the Euler angles that we have understood and we have done in a lot of detail and we have gone into fundamentals and most basics and we have solved that how it can be calculated and how Euler angles can be related to orientation matrices, Miller indices and we know uh, how to do it if you have done the previous lectures properly and try to solve them yourself in a using the p in using a piece of paper and pen and you would easily be able to understand that how all pole figures ODF Miller indices uh, inverse pole figures and orientation matrices are related right. Now, you see that if we do not consider the crystal symmetry or any kind of deformation or sample symmetry then the Euler angles are basically periodic in nature right and the periodicity of the Euler angle will be of the order of pi 2 right. So, if you rotate the Euler angle the angle moves from 0 to 360 degrees in phi 1 phi and phi 2 and that is completes the Euler angle and it is very obvious to understand that right. So, we can say from this that then g phi 1 phi phi 2 is equal to g phi 1 plus 2 pi phi plus 2 pi and phi 2 plus 2 phi it is very obvious, but you see that even in the Euler angles and basically because of the calculations of the Euler angles there is a identity in it and there is a identity present in the Euler angles. And the identity is basically represented 
as a reflection means it, it, it is representing as a reflection in the plane phi equal to pi with you know simultaneous displacement of pi means through pi in both phi 1 and phi 2. So, this means that there is a glide plane in the Euler angle space. So, what happens is that the g phi which is equivalent to g phi plus 2 pi reduces and there what happens that now the phi is basically you know uh, periodic not from 0 to 2 pi it becomes periodic from 0 to pi right pi means 180 degrees right whereas phi 1 and phi 2 remains periodic in the range 0 to 360 or 0 to 2 pi right. So, what happens that with this because of the presence of this glide plane because of this identity the periodicity of the Euler space or the Euler angles reduces and g phi 1 phi phi 2 is becomes equal to g phi 1 plus pi 2 pi minus phi phi 2 plus pi. So, you see that the periodicity of the Euler space basically is reduced without considering crystal symmetry and sample symmetry to 0 to 360 for phi 1 and phi 2 to 0 to 180 degree for phi. Okay. Now, you should note that we have carried out the we have found out the relationship between the orientation matrix and phi 1 and phi 1 phi uh, phi 2 with the help of the equations in the previous lectures and we have found out that how we can use uh, various uh, the 9 g variables few of them uh, to find out phi 1 phi phi 2. But you see that while we are using relating phi 1 phi phi 2 with this 9 variables of the g matrix we can only identify phi 1 phi phi 2 in the range of minus 90 to 90 degrees. So, this is the uh, limitation of that calculation. So, you must always keep in mind that. Okay. So, you see that the way we measured and we showed the rotations of the Euler angle or Euler space is with the help of Bunge's notation. right? So, you see the Bunge's notation is used because it is automatically being spread out throughout the world and and so Bunge's notation is being used because it is automatically being used and used throughout the world it has spread from Europe to US and other countries which use Bunge's, but there are other methodologies of rotations which are equivalently true like Bunge is the Rho's rotation and the rotation which was given by Cox. Now, these two rotations there could be earlier papers where the texture has been shown using these two rotations, but most majority of the papers uses Bunge's notation. So, you see that if we have to extract information of the Euler angles and the Euler space which uses the notations of Rose and Cox, we should know the relationship between the Bunge's notation and the notation of the Rose and the Cox, because they are giving the similar kind of angular rotations phi 1 phi phi 2 but in a different manner, but that is also is true, but that will lead to change in the positions of the components and the fibers formation. right? So, the relationship between the Bunge's notation and the Rho's notation is like this phi 1 of Bunge's notation is equal to phi plus pi by 2, where phi is the phi 1 for the Rho's notation. Phi is equal to capital phi uh, for the second rotation and phi 2 is equal to phi minus pi by 2. So, three rotations same, rot but slightly varied right. In case of Bunge and Cox notation, the relationship between the Bunge and Cox 
is that the phi 1 of Bunge is equal to phi which is the first rotation plus pi by 2 that is 90 degrees. The second rotation that is the phi of Bunge is equal to capital phi for the Cox and the third rot uh, rotation uh, phi 2 of Bunge is equal to pi by 2 minus phi for the Cox. So, there is a, a subtle difference between all these rotations, but we all follow the Bunge's notation which is uh, naturally accepted uh, in the texture community. So, that is it all about the Euler uh, space related to fiber and its periodicity. Now, I wanted to show this earlier, but I forgot it. So, I have added it in this lecture and that is related to pole figures and you see that a pole figure is a single pole figure basically is generally called an incomplete pole figure. Uh, it is it called an it is called an incomplete pole figure because usually an individual pole you know does not yield the entire orientation information as the crystal can still be rotated in that particular pole. Say for example, let us take an example of this you know hexagonal uh, crystal and this figure you have already seen and you see that in that if we are showing the 0001 pole figure and we are observing the 001 pole and we can see that it has only one pole or if it has two poles then it is a reflection of that of the first pole and it is the negative of that pole. So, it is the same pole and it gives information of that pole the presence of that pole with respect to R D and D and T D, but it does not provide an unambiguous you know representation of the texture because you see that one that 0 0 1 pole could be rotated right. It could be rotated and then the positions of the other poles like the 1 0 1 bar 0 or the 1 1 2 bar 0 becomes un means unambiguous in nature right. So, you know the you, we 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 need to show the other poles, the other poles like you know 1 1 2 bar 0 or 1 0 1 bar 0. So, we need to show the other pole figure either 1 1 2 bar 0 or 1 0 1 bar 0. Now, to show the full representation of texture. Now, you see these 1 1 2 bar 0 poles represents two means three poles which are you know uh, at 120 degree apart. So, you can see that we can observe these three poles and so you see using the one pole figure of 0 0 0 1 and another pole figure of either 1 1 2 bar 0 or 1 0 1 bar 0 we can get the full information. Now, based upon this equation also we can observe that there are three equations that forms in order to solve the information of texture based upon this relationship. So, thus three poles are necessary to derive completely the orientation matrix and it depends on the therefore, therefore it depends on the crystal symmetry. So, most of the time you see what we are doing here is we are obtaining information additional information by plotting other pole figure means that means the other poles and because of their symmetry because you see for example, 1 1 2 bar 0 and 1 0 1 bar 0 both are you know repeated uh, at 120 degrees. So, because of the crystal symmetries. So, you see here we have given 1 0 1 0 1 bar 0 axis 1 1 bar 0 1 1 bar 0 0 axis 1 bar 0 1 0 axis which forms at 120 degrees of each other and thus could give additional information of the texture. So, in this case at least two pole figures would be needed. Now, what will happen for the cubic crystals? Now, you see that cubic crystals a particular orientation is can be either described using 1 0 0 or 1 1 0 or 1 1 1 axis right. We can even describe it using you know 1 
1, 2, 0, 1, 3, 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, etc. Now, you see that 110 has a you know four fold symmetry and it has three poles 111 has a three fold symmetry and it has four poles 110 has a two fold symmetry it has six poles 0 1 2 1 1 2 1 1 3 both have three uh, 12 poles and in general any HKL plane have 24 poles other than this. So, if we if we means without uh, if we need 3 poles to represent a texture uh, a particular orientation then in case of cubic crystal we can plot out a single crystal uh, a single sorry single orientation by only by demonstrating a single pole figure right. So, you can see that because 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 are three different poles can be obtained in a single pole figure. We can use the single pole figure of a cubic crystal structure which comprises enough poles to describe unambiguously an orientation. So, what we are talking about this in both in case of hexagonal and in case of cubic crystals we are counting the poles without taking the negative one right as we I have described in the hexagonal. So, you see we are taking 1 0 0, but we are not considering 1 bar 0 0 which is exactly opposite to 1 0 0 right. So, coming to the conclusions you see orientation distribution functions reveals that texture is a spread of orientation from one component to another component and therefore, is actually represented in form of a fiber. Euler angles are full quantitative description of texture. Yes, what I have not mentioned, but I have put it in the conclusion is that Euler angles are specifically associated with the x-ray textures, because you see that Euler angle has to give the full complete information of the texture of that particular material therefore, are related to the bulk texture. So, bulk texture are obtained from x-ray texture measurement using goniometer that I am going to teach you in the coming lectures and therefore, the Euler angles are specifically associated with x-ray textures. The fibers that forms along phi is parallel to R d if phi 1 is equal to 0 and therefore, is known as R d fibers. The fibers along phi are considered parallel to T d if phi 1 is equal to 90 degrees and is known as T d fibers. The fibers along phi 1 are always the N d fibers because they are always parallel to N d. Euler angles are periodic in nature and contains a reflection of a plane in a plane which is at phi equal to pi. And finally, minimum three poles are needed to identify an orientation while using pole figure. Thank you.